Yeah, could you just get rid of it for a while? Okay, so this is our last session, and uh, it's called Biological and Radiological Physics. I think uh, following the tradition in the meeting, uh, I have to say I was not a student of Hugo Fano. <laughs> I was merely a professional friend. When I first met him in 1963, I was already a professional in uh, radiological physics. <coughs> and uh, I still continue to do the same thing. Uh, this was one of the nicer uh, times uh, when I met him in uh, his place in Verona. You see, by the way, I now hear uh, his ashes are buried uh, in this place. Okay. And, uh, the intent of this session is to show uh, the breadth, intellectual breadth of his interest, you see. And just to go through, I think uh, he was born uh, on the 28th of July. So you see, yep. we are very close to his birthday. You see, and uh, then I think, uh, of course, everyone knows that he was a postdoc with Fermi and also with Heisenberg. He had the, the very ideal education as a physicist. And then I think he even became afterwards a assistant and lecturer in Rome, you see. But then I think it became difficult for him and uh, other people of the, uh, uh, to live. Uh, under the political situation in Europe. So he moved to the United States. And there, I, uh, uh, first, uh, I think he was not as famous as Fermi, so he didn't join Manhattan Project. Rather, I think he had to work in some, with some odd jobs. First, I think he worked, I think, in 19, late 30s to 40s, I think in essentially as biophysicist, okay? And uh, I think uh, towards the end of the war, he worked on ballistics. And uh, then I think in 1946, he was first employed in the United States as a physicist. But at that time, uh, he became chief of radiation theory. So you see, until that time, uh, main line of his work was uh, radiation physics, you see. And uh, uh, just to, people may not believe in what he was doing, you see, earlier in his career. So I just want to show you this paper in 1940. <laughs> you see? There he was even doing experiments. And this was actually real biology, you see. Uh, he irradiated. Uh, fireflies, eggs of eggs and sperms of fireflies, because you see, the, those are, have very large chromosomes that are easy to look at. And then uh, he was a pioneer of experimental radiation biology. You see, and uh, what is really amazing is, you see, very quickly, I think uh, not only he used X-rays. But uh, you see, just in a few years, he even did basic experiments on neutron irradiation. And he was one of the first people to recognize how different neutrons are from X-rays in biological effects. And uh, I think this sort of thing is still being pursued by a lot of people. OK. So and. Uh, so this, uh, really, the idea of this session is just to indicate uh, intellectual breadth of, uh, of his interest. Also, even though uh, after he became professor at Chicago, he was very busy educating uh, a lot of people, but mostly in basic science, but he maintained up to the end uh, interest in radiation 
effects and la radiological physics and so forth. And uh, I think all three speakers uh, of the symposium of this session, I think, will show some connections. You see, he maintained uh, until the end, you see. So, okay, with, this is all my introduction. And first uh, speaker will be Tom Bear, all right? Would you please? Well, I'd like to uh, thank the organizing committee for inviting me to be a part of this symposium. It's always been an honor to me to be associated with uh, Professor Fano and his students.